Like this is what we call good day roses. You can use this on uh, historical roses, uh, any type of rose that you have in your landscape, uh, even to the knockout roses. Now this again, focus on healthy soil. Uh, it's loaded with calcium. It has beneficial bacteria in it to help fight diseases. Great bloom production, great fragrance. Uh, it's endorsed by Peter Bills, one of the world's greatest rosarians from England. Uh, he does actually does Queen Elizabeth, Prince Charles' uh, place, and you get to use his food on those. So it's a great rose food, and it can be used at the start of spring, uh, through summer, all the way up to our uh, to winter. When we use another product called uh, Good Night Roses, and that's what we do to put our roses to bed. In in the winter time to help them protect the root systems. It comes in these easy, convenient little packs, two buckets, to 25 pounds to 50 pounds. It depends on how large your garden is. But this is loaded with biology and everything that those roses need for great roses. We use it at the uh, uh, Fern Bank, uh, Queens Botanical Garden, uh, Green Bay Botanical Garden. We use it all over the country. Uh, and we de uh, developed this called Urban Bloom. Now, Urban Bloom and Evergreen is for evergreens and for anything that's blooming uh, in your landscape. One of the important things about this is it focuses on the soil, decompaction, root mass. So it's not just about feeding the plant, it's about feeding the plant and the soil. Because without a healthy soil, you can't have a healthy plant. We recommend this goes out twice a year, which is March and in July. If you come in in June, you can start any, start any time of the year, except for the dead of winter. Uh, but this is a great all-around food for everything around your landscape that uh, is either evergreen or blooming. Now this is our product called Eco Cedar, and uh, this is derived from uh, cedar, of course. That's why the name is Eco Cedar, and we call it Eco Cedar because it's EPA exempt. This is safe to use around your pets, your animals, your children. You can go out to that patio, spray your chair, spray everything around. It's going to keep the mosquitoes uh, away from you. You can use it on your vegetables for aphids. You can use it on scale uh, around your plants. You can use it inside for gnats, house plants, white flies, lace bugs. There's a whole array of uses. You can also use it for venomous snakes. Now, if you've got a sandbox or a little area where the kids play, you want to make sure you dart out there, spray this around. And what it works on is a pheromone, uh, and it is a repellent. Also works on Japanese beetles. You can use it. It has to be done repetitively. You want to put it out when the wind's not blowing much, so the little particles stay in place, and that aroma of cedar is not offensive. Uh, but the special formula we have here works great on everything, uh, from your pansies to your Gerber daisies. Anything that you're growing, you can use this on. If you're going outside, you're hunting, spray a little bit on your pant legs. If you're going out through the woods or you're just going out through the park, it's a great thing to have around the house, and again, it's environmentally friendly. Now, I developed this product called Garden and Flower Blend. I wanted something that I could feed both, use both in my garden as well as around my flowers, because in my garden I have both vegetables and flowers. So this product is great for me, everything from tomatoes to squash to uh, Gerber daisies right on down to your mandibellas. This is also focused on soil health, bloom production, flavor, taste, minerals, everything that you need to create a healthy plant is in this product. Also has endonectomycorrhizae, trichoderma in it, which is a symbiotic relationship to help that root system expand and grow quicker. I know it's a lot of big words, but it's really mother nature in the bag. We call it garden and flower. This product is called Urban Roots. Now, you notice a lot of our products are called urban because in an urban environment, life has been stripped away. And what we do is come back in and try to mimic it. But it's not just the recipe. It's teaching the consumer the cultural practices and the responsibility and how to do and how to grow things and help give them tips on how they can become a better gardener all the way around. Now, Urban Roots gets that plant off to a great start. It'll reduce the amount of water needed right up front. It's going to expand that root system, help it get attached quick, and that's what we call it Urban Roots. You take it and use it on anything that you're planting around your home. If we have a bear spot in the yard, it was something that killed that grass. Mm -hmm. So by us putting seed there, would we expect it to grow? Mm -hmm. 
Probably not. But, uh, wow, that's the first right answer today. <laughs> because there was something there that killed that grass. Now, you can go ahead and aerate and seed now, but we can, you, as you go along, you want to find out what kind of conditions are causing that grass to decline. What we start focusing with up and above germinate is we have a schedule here, and the schedule, I don't know if you've seen that before. Mm -hmm. This is a step-by-step -step program that sort of gives you the recipe of, of life, as, as we call it. So but then you're the curator. So what we do beyond showing you what a, what a schedule is, is to be available whenever you have challenges, which you're going to have. Oh, yeah. Uh, because if there was anything like an instant yard, we would already, what, we'd already be selling into yeah. the bag. Somebody yeah, would. Yeah, somebody would. And because seventy nine ninety five instant yard, no problem, no problems, just lay it and go. So what we start with is here is called Urban Soil Life Max. Urban Soil Life Max is puts what we do is urban soil. You know what urban soil is? It's depleted. It's been stripped. Mm. We showed today pictures in, uh, at our seminar, step by step, from when the home was constructed all the way through. So this puts all kind of beneficial things back into the dead dirt and the living soil. And what we do is say, for example, if you had, how big your yard? It's good size. Uh, how big is it? Probably yeah. 7,500, 10,000 yeah. square feet. I would say it was 10,000 square feet. This is what we call soil rehab. This is a schedule how you do soil rehab. Soil rehab is, we put right here, 10,000 square feet for the, for the time being, since we're not quite sure. As each one of these 50 pound bags, which is right here, mm -hmm. covers 5,000 square feet. So you would put two here, which would be two bags. The first month you start would be March, okay, and you would put those down in March. You do it every 60 to 90 days. So here you would put two, you put May. When you aerate and we open that soil up, we want to put that life, the, all the beneficial bacteria in the subsoil. This, on being on top, they're going to come up and get it and they're going to start creating a Swiss cheese. You'll actually be able to start walking on your yard and actually telling a difference. If the soil is getting softer, it's crumbling more, mm -hmm. it's receiving more rain. You know, we were talking earlier, if you've got a pack of soil and you get a quarter inch of rain, where's that quarter inch rain going to go? Nowhere. Nowhere, and it's going to evaporate. If you have a living soil, if you envision like a Swiss cheese, that soil's got all these openings in it, and that soil is a life of activity, where's that quarter inch going to go? Way down here. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's going to be away from evaporation. So that's what we call water holding capacity. And we have a lot of water holding capacity in here from zeolite to other products that are in there helps you do that. So then in aeration season, you put two times the amount. So it'd be four bags. You're done forever. Okay. If you want to put one bag out a year, then it would be one bag would cover 10,000 square feet. If you want to give it a booster shot each year, it's entirely your choice. Then we have things like liquid aeration. As we get you through the time, we don't want to disturb that soil anymore. We want to quit chopping it up with an aerator. I used to simply take this. Uh, we did have some here. I think they sold, that one they told me they sold out of them this morning. It comes with a hose in, and you walk along and you spray the ground, and you aerate that way. Mm -hmm. You're not cultivating weeds. You're not destroying all the little macro and micro pore openings that the earthworms and all the beneficial uh, bacteria and stuff are created. And you, it's just a great way to, to do it because we wear it so uh, The meadows. Yeah. Right. It's really so it does it itself. Right. But the reason it does it itself is because it has life in it. There's something here that's constantly feeding that soil. Mm. The twig, the bug, the beetle that's in the forest, it falls down, he dies, uh, and he decays it as the cave rock system. So that's, that's what's fed the world since the beginning of time. And the good thing, because we throw fertilizer and water on it, it's supposed to be happy. And there's the problem. Mm. literally focusing on the dirt. Everything from, comes from the dirt. Healthy dirt is number one. In fact, your main focus in life is going to go a long way. Mm -hmm. So that's what that is. Then we have a step by step program February pre emergence, April pre emergence, summer care, very low nitrogen. This also has beneficial bacteria to help fight brown patch and pythium. Uh, this also is, uh, if you notice, we don't have lime on here. We have our, what we have is what's called solucal. It's a very high grade calcium source that we put in every one of our bags. So you're spoon feeding your pH every time you apply. Mm. Instead of coming in and dumping large amounts of, of lime on once a year, we're, we're trying to keep it as a, at a balance. Instead of peaks and valleys, we like to keep it even going smooth. Right. 30 days after you seed, you want to seed in the spring. When that grass seed starts, what's going to happen? If we have a long, full season, long, you know, spring is not going in until the end of May. Right. We've seen it before, right? No. Man, you may have roots like this. If summer starts in the middle of April, how far is your roots going to be? Not very far. So how much grass is going to survive? 
Not a whole lot. So you have to get your 